I thought I'd take a look back at what I played this year, and honestly, it was mostly a lot of Genshin Impact and my MMO Aura Kingdom. I wanted to play more games, but let me tell you a few stories, starting with a story about a game I didn't play. 2022 was a pretty terrible year in a lot of ways for a lot of people. I think I don't need to list anything bad that happened to make a point and not to minimize everything else, but I wasn't able to get a single whole week off of work. I took single days here and there while my co-workers got months off, and I don't begrudge them, but I did try to get more time. It's just that unlike people who were actually going somewhere, I thought my reasons weren't good enough and I didn't push it. Looking back, I should have, but the last three years, I got taught that the more excited I was for something, the more likely it was to let me down, and I probably wouldn't be able to enjoy a week off anyway. Now, this is about video games, and I'll get to Genshin Impact, I swear, so you can enjoy footage of me playing it while I talk, but we have to go back to 2020 for this first story. Way back to the 2020 April release of Final Fantasy VII Remake. See, I booked off two solid weeks to marathon the whole game. I even pre-ordered it in a local store to make sure I could get it right on release day, which was my first day off, so no mail delays could possibly stop my personal game party. I never got to play the original game. We had a PlayStation, but complex personal backstory omitted, we didn't get the original. And I'm not big on turn-based games anyway, so I was pretty hyped for this remake of what I thought of as a hugely influential game that I had missed as a kid. But it was 2020. They closed the stores. The whole game store chain shut down every location right before the release. To be clear, this was the right choice. They rightfully faced criticism for waiting as long as they did, since they seemed to have waited for the sweet, sweet Doom release money at the expense of their employees. But they didn't do anything for the in-store pre-orders for other upcoming games. I was pretty upset that instead of being able to play the game at the same time as everyone else, I had two weeks off of work to think about how nice it would have been if I had been able to get it. They made no efforts to get in-store pre-orders switched to delivery. They were radio silent. Ultimately, I don't remember when I finally got my hands on it. I think it was like six months later or so, and my hype was completely gone. I didn't have time off work. I played a few hours, but I was just so apathetic about it after what happened and the moment had passed. In 2021, I used my vacation for Tales of Arise. It has a little story too. I ordered from Japan because how else am I supposed to force myself to remember how to read kanji? And I spent more on shipping than on the game in order to get the special edition delivered overseas via a shipping forwarder in time for my time off. And when I loaded it up in my Canadian PlayStation 4, it played in English anyway. It took me a bit to realize, because a lot of Japanese games actually have English main menus just because it's cool, I, I guess. Um, and of course, I couldn't just switch to my Japanese account to see if it played in Japanese because I needed the achievements of my main PlayStation account for some reason. I don't question it, but the number goes up makes me happy. And that's what games are supposed to be, right? They're supposed to be enjoyable. I play games, RPGs, to get immersed in a world that's not here, where I can solve the problems that are in front of me. Every time I load up a game, I hope to get back to that flow state where I'm not concerned about mortgage rates for a while and just live there for a bit. To keep the console game problems going, in 2022, I got in a car accident on the 26th of July, three days before the release of Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Uh, fortunately, no one was injured, but it put my car out of commission for three months while we waited for parts. Uh, for this game, I picked a different, non-chain local store I wanted to support to hold me a copy on release date. Google optimistically calls it a one-hour round trip by bike, but I don't think it really understands the absurdity of that with the enormous hills I would have needed to take in the summer heat. Literally uphill both ways. Fortunately, by the power of an awesome mom who happened to be driving relatively by it on the way home from work, Xenoblade 3 did not continue the tradition completely, but to be honest, I didn't actually notice that every year the RPG I was most excited for had something terrible happen around it until I sat down to write this. I was playing my number one MMO, Aura Kingdom, the whole time as well. I started playing from open beta back in university, and I became a volunteer moderator in early 2020. I've had a really good time helping people out, running events, trying to keep the game fun and safe, and as a senior moderator, I hope I've contributed to the community in a positive way. AK has the action combat that most MMOs wish they could have. I love it! I love the world of Azuria, I 
stylish threads, my Eidolons, the other moderators, and most of the players. <laughs> I love them all. Uh, but the time I spend in game is always laced with a little bit of responsibility, and Discord open on the side for DMs and reports. I can't hit that flow state while logged into my tagged characters. So here's where Genshin comes back into the picture. I started playing it pretty low-key on my phone in late December 2020 because while I don't like gacha games, I needed something to keep busy for a bit and a friend was sending me screenshots and gifs and stuff and, you know... Genshin has been a lot of fun. I was just there and said, welcome, let's go! I enjoy the story, I enjoy the combat, I enjoy running around and finding everything, I enjoy the characters, I enjoy the music, and every day I still log in. And every day, I can hit that flow state effortlessly. Genshin is not a perfect game. A lot of people might insist it's not even good. It has some serious flaws I wouldn't deny, not the least of which is that it doesn't even want you to play all day long. But that's fine. Resin isn't the problem, just play your account on three servers. No big deal. That is sarcasm. It's not fine. I get that the scarcity of resin-based resources is part of the machinations that keep you playing every day and without them everyone will be able to play every character and it will be too much fun or something and we can't have that. But I still love playing anyway. When I'm out of resin, sometimes I just build silly parties and run around killing stuff on the world map. I'm at 100% exploration everywhere on my main, but there's still secrets hiding. I just found the stone rose seeds in the desert the other day. And then we have the things that aren't even in the game. My best video is a short clip of Klee with a glitch that made it so she couldn't throw bombs. Jean took them away, obviously. And I'm hoping to top that with one of my cooking videos this year. And the cooking! I didn't even know what touch-in was, but now I love it. I can't wait to see what other kinds of wonderful foods I didn't even know existed will be introduced to me by this game. I think it really started at Ayato when I ordered myself some boba tea and got my hands on him and his weapon, and from there it was a party all day and night in the chasm. And you know, at the start when I said I didn't get any full weeks off, what I got were specific days. I took off patch days, and sometimes day after patch days. And it was really great. My Genshin friends might have needled me for completely rushing the story on patch night, but I love my little personal patch parties. I have a friend who doesn't even play that joins me for rolling just cuz, and since I started that I've actually gotten every 5 star I wanted. It might also be that they just like my cooking. So basically, because the only thing I wanted time off for was video game patches, be that Aura Kingdom or Genshin Impact, I would take a single day here, single day there, and I didn't get a full week off at all. I asked for a week off around my birthday to marathon finishing writing my novel and I couldn't get it. I asked for one or two when my roommate was away a few weeks in September and I couldn't get it. Instead, what I got were a few days here and there. And everyone knew I was just playing video games. I remember a coworker asking loudly, What game are you playing? across the whole office when they knew I had a day off coming up. And you know, it could have been that they were making fun of me or honestly asking, but I felt like after what happened with Final Fantasy and Tales of Arise, it just it wasn't a good enough reason. And even if they did take a whole week off, it just wouldn't go well. I wasn't justified enough to push on taking a whole week off for a video game. I was wrong. Games are what make me happy. Every day when I go to work, I have something on my person that's a reference to a video game because it makes me happy. Also, mostly because I bought a GeoVision and stuck it on my purse, and also because I usually wear a near Automata bandana to cover my bald spot. So it is a good enough reason to take time off work. And Genshin is a good enough game. We just... I want to talk about the fact that I did in fact spend too much money on it last month because I lost Weapon Banner twice and Scarab. Please, I just wanted this weapon and a C6 Farzad. Come on, that's bad. Don't worry, I'm financially stable enough to do silly things. Like that. You know, since I never took a vacation or went anywhere, it's not like I spent all that much on it. It's fine! Don't, don't be like me. But this year really was all about Genshin Impact for me. Because even though I turned 30 in 2022, I still was able to find that inner peace and sense of wonder that I experienced when I played my first RPG way back in high school. Because with all the crap that seems to happen every time a game I really, really want to play comes out, Genshin was just there all the time. And as much as I loved every game I played this year, Genshin is the one that did it for me the most. And it was the easiest game to just sit down and escape to because that's ultimately why I play video games, to feel something other than normal. A lot of the time. 
and especially since 2020, normal has really sucked. You want a New Year's resolution? Here's mine. I'm going to try to stop letting myself feel down about the fact that video games are what keep me happy. And I'm going to stop feeling like I need to validate my enjoyment as if everyone is judging me for it. If I want to take time off to play a video game, I'm gonna do it. Anyway, so my list of games I played this year ended up being Genshin Impact, Aura Kingdom, Beat Saber, Autica, Xenoblade Chronicles 3, Rune Factory 5, Harvestella, and Tales of the Tempest. Yes, the DS game from 2006. I gave up on it when I originally got it because it is very challenging to read kanji on the tiny screen. I wanted to challenge it again this year. Sometimes I wonder why reading normal conversations in Japanese is hard, but yeah. Itan Jinmonkan. Inquisitor. I understand that. Definitely gonna need that when I visit Japan. And the reason why I'm going on a bit about Tales of the Tempest is because, number one, in 2022, three people triggered my Tales of the Tempest R will never exist trauma button. And number two, it's a physical game for a console that I can play 17 years later. Genshin Impact is going to go away. Heck, I've got three digital Tales of games for PlayStation Portable, bought from the Japanese PlayStation Portable store, carefully and lovingly stored away on an old PlayStation 3 because I don't have enough PlayStation Portable memory cards, and that is the only way I can keep them. Digital-only games, even non-live service ones, will be lost. So even if you tell me that all my problems could have been solved by just buying a digital copy, no, they wouldn't. Recently, my little nephew was born. Real cutie. If he happens to get into video games, and I wanted to show him some of my favorite games from when I was young, which is more likely? That I can boot up Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles on the GameCube from my disc? Or that the PlayStation 4 store is still operating and I can install the remaster again? Ultimately, I sat down with myself and gave myself a real talking to as soon as I decided about my resolution for the year. And I decided, it's time. I used some of my rolled over vacation to book off two weeks in February. I'm gonna sit down and play the Final Fantasy VII Remake until I beat it. Thanks for taking the time to listen to me rant about baby games. I hope to make more cooking shorts, maybe some actual proper cooking videos, and uh, some more game videos for Genshin Impact as well. I'm having a lot of fun getting back into video production, which I had done a bit of in high school, but haven't really done much since. Here's to 2023. The big RPG for this year is probably going to be Tears of the Kingdom. So let's see what life decides to throw at me this time. <laughs>